guys, welcome back. If in the course of this video you find that the background noise is louder than usual, too loud, maybe, um, that is because I have just swapped out some components in my computer and I ended up adding a few fans. So there may be more fan noise than there used to be. So if that is too much, please let me know. Leave a comment. Um, if it's not, you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. Anyways, today we are going to continue talking about Oruk's Last time we left off, we were still talking about Iron Jaws clans. Um, and we are going to pick back up with the Blood Doofs. It is a well known fact that the Blood Doofs are not quite right in the head. Of all the clans, it is these red armored maniacs who are the truest nomads of all. For they charge from one part of the cosmos to another, as readily as other people change their trousers. Led by the wild eyed megaboss Bracca Skullhorn, they seek out realm gates and then plunge headlong through them, much to the befuddlement of civilized types that watch their progress from afar with a mixture of fear, awe, and confusion. Since the Age of Chaos, the Realm Gates, already in disrepair owing to the ravages of time since their creation, have been corrupted, captured, defiled, and rerouted in a thousand different ways. One who passes through a realm gate may end up plunging into the nothingness of the etheric void, or find themselves manifesting in a lake of boiling brass, rather than emerging at the intended destination This bothers the blood doofs not at all. Somehow, they usually get away with it, each realm gate depositing them somewhere more or less safe and stable, allowing them to continue their rampage on the other side. Perhaps it is through blind luck, perhaps not. Certainly, their shamans claim that it is the hand of Gorkamorka guiding them on their warpath across the realms, and they may well be right. The Blood Doof's fondness for chucking themselves through realm gates hails from the time when they still sought out Gordrak, the Fist of Gork. Without a doubt, he knows where the best fighting is. Over time, however, they found that the act of plunging through portals was a wild ride in itself, and they started to do it more for the thrill of it than for any real endgame. Should they find Gordrak one day, so much the better. If not, that's fine too for somehow every portal they barge through leads them to another civilization ripe for a good kicking. Always in a hurry to break heads and move on to break some more, the Blood Doofs value speed. They have a great many Gore Gruntas in their armies and prize them highly, for no matter how hard they ride them, the beasts still keep on going. Their gung-ho attitude to herring around the wilderness means 
they have a better understanding of the lay of the land than any other Uruk war clan. More than one enemy has mustered in good order against a horde of brutes, only to find a Gorgrunta charge thundering in from the flank. Da Choppas. Where da Choppas go, vandalism and rioting on an epic scale is soon to follow. Vast statues to the chaos gods are defaced in all manner of amusing ways. Priceless frescoes of the pantheon of order are daubed with crude and often obscene graffiti and quiet arboretums and gardens of contemplation are set on fire by Oruks that chant body war songs at the top of their voices. Dachapas have two things on their side. Sheer numbers and joyous belligerence. Though they have far more art boys than they do brutes and gore gruntas, and hence are seen as a bit less punchy than the other prestigious war clans, they more than make up for their sh lack of sheer strength with their commitment to their destructive agenda. They see it as their god-given duty to mete out anarchy and destruction on the mortal realm. It is their role to tear down, deface, lamboon, and belittle every culture that thinks itself refined or proud in any way. So ambitiously and inventively do they practice their acts of hooliganism that they insist all the other war clans must do the same. If a gathering of iron jaws isn't causing enough trouble, Da Chapas will soon pay them a visit, laying about them with bludgeoning weapons and berating those they see as criminally boring, until they've stirred up enough trouble to ensure the peace is no longer kept. Unusually, the leader of the Chapas is not a mega boss with a hard core of brute followers, but a weird knob shaman, though admittedly one with the head of a mega boss stuck on the end of his ma magican stick. The original boss, Dog Rock, was so formidable that when he came down with a nasty case of spontaneous combustion by green fire, his right-hand shaman, Ka Rock, took his skull as a reminder that he was not to be argued with. Since then, all the shaman has to do to keep order amongst the clan is to conjure green flames out of Dog Rock's eye sockets and bellow anger from his jaw so loud that the air itself screams in protest. Even the most raucous of Dachapas is a little bit afraid of Dog Rock, alive or dead. When Karok said Dog Rock told him that the clan should paint white war checks on their deep blue armor, they did just that sticking out their tongues in concentration as they took care to get all the fiddly bits just right. The leaders of the clan wear more checkered patterns than others, for in the culture of da Chapas, it is a sign of veteran status and of close alignment with Dog Rock's agenda of duffing up anything that isn't already done over. Bone Splitters 
regarded as unpredictable and weird, even by their fellow greenskins. Bone splitters are Uruks that have entirely lost themselves to the furious energy of the great green god. They rampage across the realms in nomadic war clans, hunting the great beasts of the wild, in whose bones they believe can be found raw war spirit. Clad in nothing but scraps of cloth, bone armor, and lurid war paint, the Uruks known as bone splitters charge to war. The light of green madness in their eyes. There is no foe. These wild hunters cannot run to ground. Never stopping and never tiring, they overtake their prey. They riddle them with volleys of arrows, or fall upon them in a feral frenzy hacking away with crude stone weapons until there is nothing left but blood and broken bones. While the primal fury of Wa magic boils in the veins of all Uruks, it holds a particular significance for the bone splitters. They feel it constantly thrumming through their bones, an incessant drumbeat that drives them relentlessly onward. Bone splitter war clans are bound together by their veneration of this strange energy, which they believe to consist of untamed beast souls. They are ever on the hunt not for food, but for the wild spirits of the great monsters that roam across the mortal realms. Once their prey has been cut down, its bones are ripped out and worn as trophies, and its organs are mashed up to create sacred body paint. These tattoos and bone trinkets thrum with mystical power the residue of the beast essences trapped within. Defying all logic, they can deflect an arrow or a bullet as surely as an iron breastplate. Amongst the many Oruk cultures that exist in the mortal realms, the call of the Wa is heard in various ways. To the iron jaws, it is a thunderous bellow of rage, summoned and spent in a brief but utterly devastating eruption. To the war clans of the bone splitters, it is a constant companion, a bestial howl that ululates inside their mind, as well as robbing them of what little sanity they once possessed. This war energy suffuses their beings, making them frighteningly difficult to cut down. Just as it hastens their strikes and hardens their already thick hides, it also grants them seemingly impossible reserves of stamina. Painted Uruks bound across vast distances on their stocky legs, barely stopping for a breath. A foe may be faster than a charging bone splitter, but few can match their relentless stride. No greenskin begins existence as a bone splitter. Instead, the blessing or curse, depending on one's perspective, of the great green god strikes seemingly at random. In battle, a spark of Gorka Morka's wild rage enters the skull of every Uruk. Sometimes, when the ruckus is over, 
individual warriors find that this incessant bellowing refuses to fade away. Unable to quiet the rattling in their skull, the Uruk in question will be driven quite mad. They will develop strange tendencies, such as collecting handfuls of broken teeth, having long conversations with their choppa, or beating other Uruks around the face with painted rocks. Unsurprisingly, such odd behavior does not endear them to their fellow boys, and these strange souls are quickly and violently driven out of their war clan. Bloodied yet undaunted, they bound off into the wilds in search of like-minded kin. Strange portents and symbols sent by Gorka Morka will ultimately guide them to the nearest Bone Splitter's war clan. There they will find a new home rampaging across the realms and spreading the power of the Wa wherever they tread. Heralds of the Wa Unlike the majority of Uruk cultures, such as the brutish Iron Jaws, Bone Splitter's war clans are ruled not by warriors, but by shamans. The strange Wurgog prophets, seers, and mystical leaders who interpret the raging will of Gorkamorka, the prophets guide their war clan on its headlong charge across the realms. They seek out omens everywhere, clouds that look a bit like a boar if one squints hard enough funny-shaped trees, and the blood splattering from a recently broken nose that seems to pool into the image of a guiding finger. All are considered promising signs that point towards the next great hunt. Despite their preference for animal prey, the bone splitters enjoy a good brawl as much as any Uruk. The armies of order, the worshippers of chaos, and the deathly minions of Nagash. None are safe when the bone splitter's blood is up, which it always is. Even the belligerent mega bosses of the Iron Jaws respect the Prophet's weird powers and their uncanny ability to sniff out where the best scraps can be found. Gathered in great numbers, the bone splitters act as lodestones that focus their god's primal power. When a big wa rises up, there is usually a vast host of bone splitter war clans at its fore, a fortuitous sign from the great green god that an almighty ruckus is on the horizon. As they spit, roar and bash their heads together in the throes of mystical madness, the green fury of Gorkamorka's spirit gathers around the bone splitters like a storm front. Nearby greenskins find themselves swept up by the swirling aura of violence, chanting and hollering alongside their strange kin. When this green catastrophe is unleashed, it can spell the doom of empires. The World of Spirits Bone splitters believe that each of the mortal realms has its own soul, much like those of the great beasts that they hunt. If one of these essences is ever found, it can be captured and caged within a bone of suitable size and grandeur. There are tales of the fiery heart of Akshi and the chilling ribs of Sheesh, 
and the sneaky shadow serpent of Ulgu, and the glaring eye of Hish. Yet as far as the bone splitters are concerned, the greatest of all of these world spirits is that of Gur, the realm of beasts. The Wurgog prophets claim that Gorgamorka created Gur, and when he did, it took a measure of his power as its soul. They say that this world spirit resides somewhere in Gur, and as a land or perhaps a creature of concentrated Wa energy. Some Wurgog prophets say that Ravenak, the mouth that lurks beneath the world, is the spirit of Gur, and thus many war clans chase his gnashing jaws, manifestations of his boundless hunger, across the land. Others say that this spirit takes the form of a star-scraping mountain of amber, or even the angry skies far above their heads. No two prophets can agree on its exact nature, nor what might happen should they ever find this place beast. But most of them believe that Gorka Morka himself is hunting the same prize. The great green god is worshipped by all bone splitters but many war clans also incorporate the world spirit of their home realm into their strange rituals, seeing them as totemic, elemental beings of great power. Each war clan has a unique interpretation of these mystical entities. The crack skulls of Akshi, for instance, pay homage to Rakanak, a great lava trilopede, believed to have once fought Gorkamorka across the realm of fire, while the ocean-dwelling flint jaws daub themselves with images of the twin-headed shark spirit they call Squid Muncha. The Splinterfoot war clan of the Jade Kingdoms worship Big Leaf, an enormous tree beast infused with the raging essence of Gorka Morka, and they travel vast distances through the wild woods in pursuit of this mythical being. These far-flung clans all seek the world spirit of their home realm unceasingly, driven by maddening visions and strange omens that only they can see. If they were to catch up to their spirit, they would of course attempt to club it to death and crack open its bones. The Wa magic to be found within such a creature would be boundless. With the magic of just one world spirit, Bone splitters could surely cause all eight of the mortal realms to tremble beneath their stomping feet. Spirit of a Savage God All greenskin cultures worship Gorkamorka in their own way. To the bone splitters, the great green god is the lord of beasts master of every creature that flies, swims, or crawls. They revere him with strange rituals and great hunts, and in return they are granted a portion of his furious power. To the bone splitters, the great green god is the master of beasts and monsters a primal deity of the hunt that blesses them with their savage madness. They believe that all animals are infused with a portion of his raging spirit, and that by killing them and pinching their bones, they can harness this power for themselves. The meaner and more ferocious the creature, the greater the 
portion of Gorgomorka's spirit it holds within. Blessed with the ability to sniff out this raging essence, Wargog prophets seek out the most foul-tempered monsters, guiding the Bone Splitter's great hunts across vast distances, like sharks following the scent of blood. These hunts can take a war clan far from its homeland. It can lead them to new realms entirely. Should the call of Gorka Morka echo strongly enough in a Wurgog prophet's mind? The thunderous stomping of greenskin feet drives predators, herd beasts, and flocks of birds before it, as the creatures de desperately try to avoid getting crushed by the green stampede. Larger beasts, such as two-headed Gurish griffins and great drakes have even more to fear, for the spirits of such almighty creatures are prized above all others. When their quarry is finally cornered, it is slain in a hail of arrows and stabbing stickers. Nothing is left to waste. Every scrap of its body is either eaten or fashioned into a crude trophy. All bone splitters know that bones and teeth are the best and toughest bits of any kill, and these are the first things to be torn out by grasping green fingers. After a vicious punch-up or two to decide who gets the choicest loot, the Oruks will adorn themselves with their prizes. Bones are lashed to weapons or simply thrust straight through flesh, so their power might bleed directly into the warrior's weapon or soul. In addition to objects harvested from the corpses of their prey, Bone splitters will also daub their flesh with sacred tattoos, depicting the beasts they have slaughtered and the spirits they have absorbed. The Wurgog prophets mix together the paint used for these rituals. Gall slime, blood, crushed beetles, and squishy bits taken from recent kills are mashed together and slathered onto flesh while the prophet mutters sacred words. As the power of the law runs through a painted Oruk's blood, these tattoos will come alive, thrashing and writhing on his flesh. Other greenskins tend to find this squirmy war paint unsettling, but even they grudgingly admit to its strange power. Bone splitter markings can cause incoming blades and missiles to skip off at strange angles, much to the consternation of their wielders. When a Wurgog prophet calls upon the beast magic that stirs within the paint, even incoming spells can be repulsed in a shower of green sparks. Bestial magic. The close relation between the realm of beasts and the great green god is the source of the feral madness that infects the bone splitter war clans. The thumping war song of the Wa has been infused with the bestial roar of Gur in the minds of these Oruks, resulting in a predatory drive that is quite different from the indiscriminate impulses of the Iron Jaws. Though they delight in acts of violent lunacy as much as any greenskin, there is a strange, primal kind of logic to the bone splitter's rampages. They hunt and kill not to simply satisfy their own cravings, but as a way of life. Unlike most greenskins, they do not let the corpses of their prey go to waste. 
Likewise, though the Wargog prophets may caper about and babble an apparent stream of utter nonsense, there is an undeniable power in their magic. They have a connection to the wild soul of Gur that would take an amber battle mage decades of study and meditation to possess. Where the bone splitter war clans of Gur gather in great numbers, the power of the Wa manifests in many strange and destructive ways. The beasts of the realms are driven into a frothing frenzy, biting chunks out of one another, or charging about, and dementedly bashing into things. Trogoths lumber out of their hidden lairs to pull up trees or headbutt mountains, and the very earth splits apart and begins to chew upon itself. The bone splitters believe that Gorkamorka's foot slamming down with godly force causes this strange behavior, driving their prey into the open. In fact, it is caused by the Wa energy that swirls around the Oruks, clashing with the raging beast spirits contained within their bone charms. This savage aura grows more and more potent as the bone splitters drive themselves into a frenzy with indecipherable yells and capering war dances until it is finally unleashed upon the realms like a massive, clenched fist. And that is where we are going to bring this video to a close. If you liked this video, please consider liking it, leaving a comment, sharing it, which I know ASMR is not like the kind of thing you share generally, but if you happen to know people who might appreciate it, I would love it if you could share it. And of course, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Um, the algorithm does not like me, so pretty much the only way you'll see my videos uh, is if you subscribe. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy the video, uh, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.